I, I wanted to take some time to explain some, you know, I want to ask a question is the reality creator a new model or easier to learn and that. Uh, I like to think about this uh, organization format. I'm doing RBIM, Realization Behavior Green Integration Model. So obviously I need to use an organizing format, which is the reality creator. And some people know what, what, what's, uh, you know, what's a reality creator? And they go like, well, you build new realities. That's kind of the point of it, is you build a new reality. And people go like, what's that then? Uh, if you think about it, most people, when they think about reality, don't do that because they think about life, everyday life. Everyday things to do in whatever uh, life they have, uh, because they don't have uh, awareness or uh, the distinction or comparison to understand whatever life they have, as they was raised as as a, as a kid, they were, um, you know, by the parents or maybe they were adopted or something like that, whatever. So they could become a man or a girl or a lady or, you know, an asshole or a bitch, something like that, uh, along the way. Uh, or an idiot, uh, that's common also, uh, or uh, a citizen of the society or something like that, or just a fun, you know, loving guy uh, or a girl, or, you know, just a mom or dad, something like that. So most people, when they talk about reality, they don't get that kind of concept because most people think about their everyday life as, you know, life. There's nothing more than, you know, life. So you have to understand that when you're building a new reality that people, you know, what's that? Because, well, you can say we can build a new life. So you can have the life creator, you know. But then the people go into the, you know, oh, is that about birth or something like that? And I go like, no, it's not. It's about new reality. You know? So you have to think uh, around the concept of, uh, okay, I have this kind of response or reaction to things. You know, when I see a snake, I get really afraid. And if I have such a client, I ask them, you know, okay, cool. So if you're not afraid of snakes, you probably feel something different. And they go like, yes, I probably should, but I'm still afraid of snake. I don't care about that. I'm just asking how you will be like, well, I probably will think that, that's, you know, I don't know, like nothing special about it. And I go like, okay, of course, there's nothing special about snake. Then they go like, no, there's nothing special about snake. So how, how, how do you feel about that? Then? I go like, well, that feels kind of cool, you know. And they have no response to, you know, phobia of snakes suddenly. Some people think, you know, uh, fixing a phobia takes a long time. Uh, actually, the longest time I had to uh, fix a phobia or clear a phobia or whatever it is, uh, it's about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. And that's why I, I went to actually, it was a girl who had a snake phobia, so we went to a zookeeper who had, you know, snakes and stuff, and fishes and, you know, all those cool stuff. And so, so I did that. I had a student in the workshop, it was a little bit easier to do. It took about 30 seconds. So, uh, so, so a lot of people think, you know, a phobia takes a long time, and I go like, okay, not true in my experience. That doesn't mean it can take a long time, obviously, because, you know, people are different, you know. Uh, some people are cranky. Some people, are, you know, don't believe in stuff like this. It's impossible, you know, to do this, you know, a new reality. I can't have a new reality because life is like this, you know, they tell me, you know, all that stuff. And I go like, so, okay. And archaeologically, you know, a person who uh, study history, uh, by digging up uh, sand and stone and stuff like that where people died many years ago and uh, uh, all in the name of science, it's not grave robbing. When they put things in the museum, it's not grave robbing. Yes, you know, if you, if you keep it at home, then that's a bad thing. That's a grave robbing. Or sell it. Uh, so, um, all in the name of science. Now, I had an archaeologist as a client many years ago and she had a problem at the workplace, and I said, so it's a lot of history in your workplace, and she goes, yeah, she, because you make a career in history, basically, you know, digging up all that stuff. And so some people ask me, so what's the main, main, main difference between RBIM and whatever else people do when I go like, 
Well, most people in any other technology or not, we try to alter your reality, change something in it, fix your problems or whatever it is. I'm building a new reality and I go, because I don't care whatever is going on in your life or what has happened or what did go on. Hmm, let's think about that for a moment. <laughs> we build a new reality. That's the reality great. That's what I do. Uh, inside that, we have a lot of models that we use in the RBIMs. So understanding the comparison model, for example, that your brain has evolved through the ages, called evolution, and it's uh, the Darwin one, not a religious uh, evolution. The, the religious evolution is totally different. And uh, a lot of people like that one. I don't understand why. Well, I, I think I like the Darwin one because you can, you know, have mutants. I mean, come on, X-Men, Wolverine, you know, with all the clothes and all that stuff. Yeah, yes, he had a troubled past, you know. He had this, you know, brother who kicked his ass all the time. Uh, Sabitude, you know, and all those stuff. Oof. But, I mean, he's kind of cool. He smokes cigars, you know, all that stuff and, you know, Having clothes coming up from your fist, you know, that's kind of amazing. And some people say, well, you know, that's not real. And I go, like, well, I watched it on TV or in the movies. It has to be real. Because someone came up with the idea and put it on, you know, I don't know, serious digital format, stuff like that. So reality for most people uh, is not, you know, people don't think about it. It's more like your life. So, what can you use the reality creator for? Oh, it can create a new reality. So, if you're using it for sports, you can uh, run faster, jump higher, uh, throw stuff longer, uh, and stuff like that. If you talk about golf, since uh, I mentioned about playing golf, you can hit the ball longer, further, more strength. Uh, I thought a guy who had a, you know, a traditional swing to hit the, the ball 50 yards longer, to his surprise, it took one session. One session. And so people say, well, you can't do that. Well, uh, maybe it just works with golf. No, it works with triathlon. You, when you're a uh, triathlon, uh, Olympic distance is about, uh, you know, running, swimming and bicycling for a long time, around two hours. Uh, the best uh, do it a little bit faster than two hours, about, I don't know, 140, one hour, 40 minutes, something like that, I don't know. And it, it's a lot of work to be, become good in that kind of sport. And it works there also. I had a triathlon athlete in Sweden, she, came, she went from pretty good to really awesome. She went in to compete in the European Championships. She was uh, also considered for the Olympic Games back in Beijing 2008. So I mean it's kind of cool stuff this one, it, you know, you can, I can actually run faster, yes you can break personal record, you can get a breakthrough and you can, you know, all do all this, take action, you know, some, like some people like to say, and I'm going like, ah, I know, kind of a lot of work that, and now you can try to, you know, build motivation with willpower, I will stop smoking today, and tomorrow you say the same thing, I will stop smoking today, the next day you will, you will be motivated and take action. It doesn't work that well because you have to build a new reality. Because when everything change work, you know, people talk about change, you know, change work and all this. Whenever it works, it always works following the same, you know, patterns or basic outline. No matter the technology used. I either use psychology, either use primal scream therapy, either use, you know, the gun and the, you know, threaten them that they have to change or you will kill them. Or if you're using NLP or some derivative from NLP, which there's a lot of, them, I mean, it's a, whatever you call it, the fifth, sixth, seventy fifth generation, you know, NLP, whatever you call it, or some derivative from it. Doesn't matter what kind of, you know, cognitive analyzed or KBT or if, if you're using the esoteric, Person, so yeah, EFT, the energy systems, you know, ooh, ah, using any kind of cool stuff. Some people think I don't know. Um, kind of trouble with those things myself. Um, 
kind of practical handsome guy and well I can you know have a placebo effect also that's kind of cool placebo is pretty cool you take you know placebo people and go like whoa they're selling away that's kind of cool man where is everybody and you're sitting there you know uh, one of my favorite trailers of all time was with the uh, Johnny Depp movie with uh, the blow he was you know one of the trailers he was sitting there you know, I can't feel my face and he was just holding his hand, you know, like, like this. I can't feel it. He was thinking his face was out there. That's kind of a cool experience. If you have kind, of, have taken drugs and do do that. I don't recommend taking drugs. It's bad for you. I don't take drugs. Uh, I take coffee. Uh, I consider that the, the oh, it's a drug. And I have to admit, I'm a slave to it. So I have to maybe change that reality somehow. Down the path. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just rambling a bit here. This is early in the morning, <clears throat> about mm, almost seven hours from now, I'll be on the golf course. I will be competing in the club championship here in uh, where I live. And it's a two day event, and uh, today is the first day. So I will prepare myself this morning so I can be ready for it and all that stuff. And blah, 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 so. Whatever. I just wanted to say that the reality creator, to understand it, you have to understand that you're living in a reality and that reality can be different. So you can respond and interact with the environment a little bit different than you doing today. So instead of, you know, be having a hard time or feeling bitter or, you know, thinking, you know, whatever you're thinking, you can, you know, have something else that you enjoy, have more fun and harmony and flow and so on. Whatever it is that floats your boat, basically. You can have whatever you want. Can I have everything? I want a new brand new Porsche or a job. And I go like, well, you know, then you first have to create a software company that sells a lot of software so you can get a lot of money, then you can buy jobs. And that's the way it works in the real world, most of the time. So you get a really good idea, you implement a really good idea, and you do steps that, you know, people buy this uh, product or result of that really good idea and you make a lot of money on that kind of good idea. And then you can buy all the stuff and, you know, retire and all that stuff like Bill Gates did and do a lot of, you know, share his work and stuff like that he does. So, uh, so, so some people say, well, I don't want to do a lot of work, you know, and go, no, that's one way of, you know, thinking about reality. You can think about it. You see, what the thing that, when people find something they like, or love, or have passion about, you know, they can put in hours, hours, days, weeks, you know, they can sacrifice basic anything. That's why I like to work with elite performers, you know, professional golfers, and, and professional athletes in any, you know, I want, would love to work with New Zealand football team, or a football organization. I have some great ideas about that. So if you're from New Zealand or Australia or something like that, uh, consider you, you know, talk uh, to me about that. Yeah, yeah, so promote myself a little bit out there, you know, Ooh, stuff like that. Uh, some people say, you know, I can't take him seriously. And I'm going like, that's because most of people think about stuff seriously. I know, this is early in the morning, I know, I have things to do. Uh, I have a tournament coming up. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to play 18 holes on a top course. So I have to do my juice to the end of the morning more. Uh, you know, uh, this is me signing out. Uh, I'm going to, you know, hopefully meet some uh, cool guys today. I'm going to chase the white rabbit. And I'm going to have a reality. Later this afternoon, it's going to be different than this one I have with you guys and girls and ladies and aliens because I know you're out there watching us, taking measurement. Oh, yeah, because that and, and uh, it's always happening in America, in America, also it doesn't happen here in Sweden. That's kind of strange, don't you think? That all the alien abductions does is made in America mostly. I'm sure there is some in other countries also because why would they, you know, want to, you know, probe all Americans? I mean, isn't 
to want to chew it off. Who would think, you know? I don't understand that. I have to think about that for a long time.